It seems that someone's getting a narration of the gospel. Is this true? Is there something strange going on? Um, I don't know if someone can check on that. In the meantime, um, raise your, use your reactions to raise your hands if you can hear me. Yay. So we'll assume the other thing was just a glitch. And we want to do our own form of prayer here, if you will, <clears throat> and take a moment to show respect for the Chumash people on whose unceded sacred lands we meet, and for me, the Chochenya Ohlone people. We acknowledge that the lands on which we work and reside hold the stories and songs of indigenous people from time immemorial. At CSUCI, we honor the stewardship of the Chumash present past, future, with gratitude for the land itself. May we also recognize the enslaved and indentured peoples who have been forced into unpaid and underpaid labor in the construction of this country, our state, and cities. To the people and their descendants whose labor enabled and continues to enable our relative comforts, we take a moment to acknowledge their undervalued labor, recognizing that it is our collective responsibility to critically interrogate these histories to repair harm, to honor, protect, and sustain this land for us all. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we have a great deal to share and we have so much. Um, so I'm just thrilled, but I wanna start by turning it over to President Yao for his welcome. All right, good morning, everybody. Thanks, Jules. Uh, really excited to be here virtually. I don't know. I'm tired of saying that, but I'm, I'm excited to be with all of you virtually again. And I want to welcome all of you to the Center for Community Engagement Celebration of Service Awards. And again, I know it's not typical us being virtual, but uh, what I think I appreciate the most about uh, our Center for Community Engagement, our community partners, and all of you on this call, we did not let COVID stop us from doing what we can to serve our community uh, in the best way that we, that we could and engaging our students in the community, engaging the university and, and serving in a way that was extremely challenging uh, to say the least. And I just, I wanna really thank everybody. And as somebody who throughout my entire career, you know, wasn't traditional. I was, uh, you know, in the nonprofit sector for, for many, many years in the mental health community, uh, serving uh, those and, and with my teaching responsibility. So bridging, you know, higher ed and the work that we do with our faculty, staff and students uh, with the community. It's just very, very close and dear to my heart. And I want to thank uh, all of you on this call for that continued effort. To me, it speaks, um, like I said, it's at the heart of what we're trying to do here, right? And uh, I just couldn't be more proud of everyone's efforts here. And of course, this is the end of the year celebration for our students, faculty, staff, and community partners who come together, like I said, to engage in what I think is one of the best high impact practices we have, right? Service learning, community-based learning, and uh, you know, promoting student learning through serving our community. And uh, today we're gonna share examples of projects that have, again, persisted and persevered through COVID and presenting awards to faculty, students, community partners, and staff 
who really have stepped up and shown uh, exceptional work uh, in helping each other. And we hope to inspire more projects like this, especially as we return from the pandemic. And we're here to recognize the recipients of the Engaged Faculty Award, uh, the Dr. Richard Rush Community Partner Award, Student Reflective Essay Award. And I know this is something that's very, very close uh, and heartfelt to many of you on this call in our entire campus community, but the Janet uh, Korsmo Community Engagement Award. And um, you know, you're all playing a big role, uh, no matter what position you're in across campus, and you continue to support our students and give back to our community. And I'm really uh, very genuinely grateful for the commitment that you show. So once again, welcome to our Center for Community Engagement Celebration of Service Awards, and I will turn it back over to the team. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Yao. It's so wonderful to have you here, and I hope you're able to enjoy um, as much of this as possible because there's so much and it's so packed. You see on the screen our CCE's mission. We are charged with building a culture of service, and we do this by, among other things, administering three large initiatives, service learning, community service, and volunteerism. At our best, we nurture deep collaborations among our stakeholders, and we hope today inspires more. We have a portfolio of initiatives, um, and given the pandemic, we decided to focus our efforts this year on developing the capacity of all of our stakeholders. We will be sharing more about how we did this over the course of our time today. <clears throat> Under normal circumstances, we would all be milling about Grand Salon, taking in the various posters, explaining the array of service learning projects our students have engaged in over the year. We'd be enjoying the refreshments in each other's company and the excitement of people sharing their passion projects. <sighs> but this year, because we do not have the luxury of lingering with each other around the posters, Instead, we are sharing some sample videos, and they are only samples, we have many more that um, could be here, that highlight the community partnerships that flourished in spite of COVID, and that we hope will inspire future collaborations. We will intersperse the videos throughout the program, and we're gonna open with one from Javier Gonzalez and his Spanish 420 class, who partnered with Juliana Logan and the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History and C Center. It's a short video offering just snippets of the voice thread that he and his students produced. And that is available to you to view at your own leisure through a link in the chat. And that will be showing up in just a moment. Um, so enjoy Javier's video. Hi, my name is Javier Gonzalez. And I am very proud to present our service learning project for spring 2021, expanding access to nature through translation. So our project is a class-wide project, and it's an important first step in expanding access to nature and nature education by translating materials for the Santa Barbara Museum of Natural History. It's a means of combating environmental inequality locally. So the class translated a range of pages focused on outdoor activities for kids from the museum's website with our specific target audience in mind, the Spanish speaking communities in Ventura and Santa Barbara counties. The project is the beginning of the museum's effort to increase access for these populations to the museum and the Sea Center, which is located in Stearns Wharf in Santa Barbara and the many nature education activities offered through these institutions. And next we have Jennifer. Hi, Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Raymond. I'm the Community Partner Coordinator for the Center for Community Engagement. Here at the CCE, I help to build capacity between our community partners and the university. And um, during this very unique academic year, we had to transition to virtual meetings, virtual events, and virtual service learning. So I'll be going through a little bit about how we did that. Our communi community partners, our co-educators who work directly with faculty to develop and implement high quality service learning projects 
for service learning students. They're critical to the success of, um, of our service learning students as they facilitate on-site learning and provide them with community knowledge that links back to their classroom learning. Um, so let me introduce you to our many community partners. Um, the, the, so the Center for Community Engagement partners with over 85 nonprofits, governmental agencies, libraries, and area schools. These service learning partnerships address community needs such as homelessness, housing, food insecurity, environment, immigration, youth development, literacy, senior issues, health, education, and community economic development. We could not do this work without them and are grateful for their involvement in the service learning program and their commitment to our students. Uh, next slide. Our community partners are the leaders making our communities better places for us all to live. And they offer our students experience rich um, environments for learning. Some of our partners were able to share um, the impact of the service learning program on their organizations. Our partners at Carl, Drag, and Big Brothers Big Sisters of Ventura County shared these thoughts with us. Please take a moment to read. We also have three short videos to share from Christina Farino with Food Share, Julie Moreno with Casa de Vida, and Roberto Martinez with the Boys and Girls Club of Camarillo. Hello, staff and students at CSU CI. I'm Christina, the Director of Volunteer Services here at Food Share. We appreciate this 14 year partnership with over 3,000 hours and 300 of the staff and volunteers helping us lead the fight against hunger in Ventura County. We appreciate your youth and enthusiasm in getting all the hard work done. We look forward to a continued partnership in the future. Hello, my name is Julie Moreno. I am the executive director and co-founder of Casa de Vida. Casa de Vida is an alcohol drug recovery residential program located in the city of Oxnard. We recently began partnering with Channel Islands University and its students. So far, we've had two students and we are very pleased to be partnering with them. The students that we've had have been of high caliber, very intelligent, very knowledgeable and very professional. And we are just pleased to be partnering with them. We have used them to help us develop our media package. Um, many of the men that we work with have life stories that it's just very hard for us to really write it down and keep track of it. So the, the people that have helped us are writing the stories, videotaping the stories so that we can use it later on to show the progress that they are making. Alongside with that, they serve as an encouragement to the men in our program to show them that change is possible and college is also something that they can do. And the men have benefited from them because they, they do inspire them. I am very pleased and I thank the Channel Islands University for allowing us to partner with them. Thank you. Hi, my name is Roberto Martinez. I'm the CEO at the Boys and Girls Club Camarillo. And we've been working with the Center for Community Engagement for the past decade, and it has been a great experience for our club and our kids. Um, what I really enjoy about it is we welcome these students from the university and our kids have a lot of curiosity and they like to go and speak with them and engage with them. And, and it's always brought on a lot of fantastic mentoring because these kids, they learn more about the students. They learn more about their career path, what they're studying. And then they get the sense that, you know, that's attainable for me as well. And they learn more about the opportunities at the university. And it really creates a nice pathway for our students, our kids to go onto the next level of their education. So um, just hope to continue this partnership and appreciate everything they do for us.
During this pandemic, many of our community partners had to suspend face-to-face -face operations. However, um, community needs didn't disappear. Indeed, many of them were all the more pressing. And unfortunately, as the demand on nonprofits rose during this time, volunteerism decreased, leaving a major gap in available support for nonprofits at a time um, when demand for their services had risen um, substantially. So the Center for Community Engagement created this virtual volunteer fair to engage students in volunteering, bring awareness to various nonprofit organizations, their volunteer opportunities and the communities they serve. And they provide a space for nonprofits to share their mission and recruit potential volunteers. So the CCE hosted two virtual volunteer fairs this year. Our fall fair had 25 community partner participants and the spring fair had 39 participants. We had, it, uh, we had 20 partners give short presentations and that video will be on the website by next week. And for anyone who would like to view our participants and their volunteer needs, um, we'll put the link to the website in the chat. Um, we also hosted a COVID-19 response town hall, a community conversation to address this unprecedented time and provide opportunities for inclusive dialogue among community members, community partners, faculty, students, staff, and campus leaders. We plan for this to be the beginning of many such campus community conversations. The town hall engaged communities through um, inclusive dialogues about the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on community climate and assets, developed experiential learning opportunities that are responsive to community needs through innovative uh, community campus partnerships, and created networking opportunities between the community and campus to strengthen partnerships and craft an agenda for action. The panel of leaders on the screen answered questions about how the pandemic impacted the population they serve and the organizations, moderated by Supervisor Carmen Ramirez. So now we will present the first of our community engagement awards this afternoon, beginning with the Dr. Richard R. Rush Community Partner Award. This award honors a community partner nominated by a faculty member who exemplifies what it means to be a partner in student learning and ensuring high impact practices. This year, Christina Heredia and Antonio Juarez from Cabrillo Economic Development Corporation were nominated by Dr. Mari Riojas Cortez, Lauren Chase, and Dr. Annie White, and are the winners of the Dr. Richard R. Resch Community Partner Award. We asked Christina and Antonio to use the reactions to raise their hands and let us see them as we honor them here. So while they do that, um, I'll read a little about what their nominators wrote. As schools closed and went to virtual distance learning, the early childhood study students lost the opportunity to teach in classroom settings and children lost learning opportunities and became isolated from their communities. The partnership with Cabrillo Economic Development and Christina and Antonio at Meta Street Apartments and via Cesar Chavez opened the window of possibilities. Through this partnership, early childhood study students were able to provide virtual learning experiences for children who live in these farm worker housing communities. Christina and Antonio's deep commitment to the partnership and supporting the children and families was very evident. Through their actions, they demonstrated strong collaboration, innovation, and commitment not only to the children and families in the community, but also to the early childhood study students. They modeled selfless service, and as the students served the children and families, Christina and Antonio also served us and gave the university the gift of true partnership. Antonio and Christina are strong advocates who work tirelessly to ensure meeting their families' needs. Their commitment to partnering with the early childhood studies program and students was demonstrated over and over again through their willingness to help recruit children from the farm worker housing community through creating sign-up sheets, 
supporting student promo videos, participating after their workday in the Zoom virtual student-led activities, attended the weekend virtual science, technology, engineering, arts, and math program, and the Little Dolphins virtual learning program. Please join me in celebrating Christina and Antonio, this year's winners of the Richard R. Rush Community Partner Award. Would they like to say a word? Christina or Antonio, are you there? Yes, thank you. Uh, on behalf of Christina and myself, we'd like to thank Annie White for the nomination, Pilar Pacheco, Jennifer Raymond, and the Center for Community Engagement for bringing this partnership together, to Lauren Chase, Dr. Maya Jos Cortez, and their amazing group of students for all their hard work and dedication to the Little Dolphins program all the CDC families, their children who participated in the program. Thank you so very much. This is truly a team effort. I wish all the CI students success in their future endeavors. We have made a profound impact on all the children and their education goals for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Antonio. Um, and congratulations. Um, you are just such amazing community partners. Um, and now we have another video. We're proud to offer a service learning project from health sciences professor Tom Clovis, um, his Health 492 class, who partnered with FoodShare. The faculty who teaches service learning for the health sciences program. I wanted to share with you some of the course design changes we have made to improve our service learning experiences for our students. One of the things that we uh, really wanted to focus on was our students understanding both the contribution, the community organization they're working with makes to the community, but then also what their service to that community organization, um, what their service makes to the, to the organization, I should say. So we revised our learning objectives and the two new learning objectives that we added were gaining knowledge and understanding of the community organization's purpose, goals, vision, and the issues in which it addresses, and then gain knowledge and understanding of the community the organization serves and how the community members utilize those needed services. In order to help the students achieve those learning objectives, one of the assignments that we added this semester was an infographic. Um, and in that infographic, they were supposed to um, look at what the organization does and how it meets the needs of the community. So I'd like to share with you one of the students' submissions from a few weeks ago. So you can see here, uh, this is uh, our students were working with FoodShare. Um, and food shares mission was it or is because no one should go hungry. You can see our students identified that food share is addressing malnutrition in the community and they identified the major impact on Ventura County. Obviously, uh, with COVID-19, there's been an increase in poverty, unemployment, food insecurity and other issues that Food Share has directly been involved with and our students through their service learning has directly aided with. This infographic also directly looks at specific statistics in terms of the needs of our community. Just to highlight a few, 69% um, have had to choose between paying for food or utilities. 41% um, um, have um, a member with a, a post high school education. 66% um, have had to choose between food or medical care. Um, and, uh, you know, 58% have a member with high blood pressure. So we're seeing, you know, a, a range of educational backgrounds in the community. We're seeing a lot of people who are, are dealing with financial and food issues, and then also health care issues that are that are affecting the community as well. Um, and then uh, just wrapping up this infographic, 
um, were different programs that Food Share had and how it met the needs of the community. Um, so they, it helps with uh, addressing food insecurity. Um, they have different um, apps and uh, ways for people in the community to sign up for their programs. Um, they have a senior program, they have a community market program, and then they have a kids farmer market program. Um, so this activity helped our students connect between their service experience throughout the semester and what the organization uh, was actively doing uh, to help meet those needs of the community. Thanks for your time. Oh yes, unmute myself. <laughs> so now we're going to move to the faculty development initiatives that we had for this year. Um, we focus much of our effort on building stakeholder capacity, as we said, and providing virtual support. Um, and with faculty, this meant developing what we call communities of practice. Um, so the service learning faculty are a resilient community um, as is evident in these videos and, and other evidence here, especially in this virtual world. And we recognize the past months have presented new and different challenges. This virtual community of practice was designed to create the intentional space for faculty to come together monthly, to create a space to share, reflect, and build knowledge around key competencies in virtual learning. And there's so much learning that happens among faculty when we sit down and say, well, I was trying this out in this class and, and oh, wow, I could do that in mine. And, and you know, we learn so much from each other when we take these few moments and, and the center nurtures these moments together for faculty. And so we met um, for three uh, sessions each semester. Annie White um, facilitated the fall, Georgina Guzman and um, Melissa Swanke did um, the spring semester. And we supported faculty in those discussions and they were quite rich. We also have the mentoring program. Um, in this, we support um, a faculty, two faculty members, one of whom has uh, extensive, and we can go to the next slide, I think. Um, yes. Um, one of whom has extensive service learning experience and the other who is a new faculty member and they work together all year and, and uh, meet regularly and develop mm -hmm. um, uh, service learning capacity that way so that the new faculty member can work over the course of the year to develop a service learning project for one of their courses. The first semester focuses on thorough design of the service learning course and the second semester is on the implementation of that design. And now I'm going to turn it over to our CCE director, the fabulous Pilar Pacheco, who will describe our other two faculty development initiatives. Thank you, Jules. And good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for being here today. Um, I'm going to be describing uh, our next two slides will describe two of our faculty development uh, programs that we are especially proud of. They are year long programs. The first one is our community engagement and social justice uh, faculty fellows program. And it's a development opportunity that was designed for faculty who want to specifically deepen their service learning teaching and practice by really pushing their thinking about social justice and at the same time creating or refining, refining a course that will allow students to engage with community issues through a social justice lens. And by that, we mean looking at community issues, examining systems of power, privilege, oppression, questioning biases and assumptions, and really working to change the social and economic systems for equity and justice so that our students then begin to see themselves as social change leaders and community advocates. The year long program was organized around a series of interactive uh, workshops, invited speakers. So we were fortunate to have some real leaders in the field of critical service learning. Um, we invited speakers such as Tania Mitchell, uh, Tessa Hicks Peterson. We had our very own Georgina Guzman, and we also had Scott Myers Lipton um, attend the workshops and uh, speak with our, our fellows. Um, the program has created seven critical service learning courses that will be taught next year. We're very excited to continue to support these faculty and those uh, projects will then be highlighted 
in person at next year's celebration of service. Another faculty development program that um, Dr. Dennis Downey ran this year was the Community-Based Research Fellows Program. This was the first year that we ran this program. And as a prelude to, the, to this work, we have a video from Dr. Leslie Abel's Community-Based Research course, Sociology 499, in which her students assessed student attitudes and perceptions of the CSUCI University Police and Campus Safety. So let's have a listen. The Sociology Capstone course, Soch 499, requires senior students to complete a research project based on a specific area in the discipline of sociology and often includes service to community partners in the form of community-based research. These projects are intended to bring together the skills students have developed throughout the sociology curriculum namely their training in research, analysis, and writing, in order to address a community partner's need for research or data. In the fall of 2020, my sociology capstone course partnered with Chief Morris and Lieutenant Jaton in order to assess CSUCI students' attitudes and perceptions of both the University Police Department as well as overall campus safety. Students were divided into two research teams. Each team followed a design to delivery process in which they designed the research project, gathered and analyzed quantitative data, and presented the findings in both a written report and online presentation to our partners pictured here. Overall, the data indicated that students had positive attitudes toward the university police department and reported feeling safe while on campus. When critical attitudes were expressed, they often centered on a specific interaction with the university officer or cited systematic problems with police practices beyond the university. The University Police Department intends to use this data to adjust outreach efforts with CSUCI students in order to realize their community policing efforts, as well as highlight new safety features on campus. For those interested in embedding community-based research in their course, it's important to develop a strong relationship with a community partner to define and develop the scope of the project. It is also extremely important to build in flexibility. So the Community-Based Research Faculty Fellows Program was a year-long program too, and a professional development opportunity for our faculty who were interested in community-based research, and that is developing a research question and a research project in collaboration with a community partner to address a community need or community issue. So the program is designed to serve as a learning community for novice and experienced community-based research practitioners working together to build individual and collective expertise and campus capacity for this type of research. It was organized around a series of interactive uh, workshops, including invited speakers and published research. These courses too will be offered this coming academic year and the projects and deliverables that will be um, a result of these, uh, these courses will then be highlighted at next year's celebration of service. And so we look forward to celebrating those faculty and projects then. Next slide, please. So as I shared, the program was designed and led by Dr. Dennis Downey from the sociology program. And we are grateful and indebted to his expertise and um, support of this program. The following video made by Dr. Downey does a great job explaining community-based research and its impact on student learning and the community. And for Dennis's project, which he speaks about here in the video, he and his students partnered with um, our, the community organization, Community Advocacy Coalition, and worked with Angela Timmons and Byron Ward. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the 2021 Celebration of Service. I hope everybody's enjoying it. Uh, I am Dennis Downey. I'm a professor in sociology. And I'm going to uh, share with you um, a project that I did with my capstone students, a community-based research project uh, that I did with capstone students in the fall of 2020. We partnered with a community advocacy coalition. It was a great success, we all believe. Uh, and so I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. The report that came out of it was uh, titled Issues, and advocacy, Issues of Advocacy and Community Life for African-Americans in Ventura County. So I'm just gonna run through it really briefly uh, today, um, tell you a little bit about what we did and hopefully inspire other people to get into some community-based research. I'm a big proponent of it. 
Uh, our partner was the Community Advocacy Coalition, uh, which is a nonprofit advocacy organization focusing on African Americans in Ventura County and, and the Central Coast. Um, they do a lot of their work through committees, um, and they, as, as it says there, educate, engage, and empower uh, community stakeholders as stewards in affirmative efforts for their own self-interests. So it's a very important organization, particularly at our particular time in history. I worked with 15 capstone students, great bunch of students, uh, all of whom graduated that semester. Well, almost all of them um, in our sociology capstone course. And we do a lot of community-based research in the sociology capstone courses, um, but we had a great group and that certainly contributed to the success. I want to tell you a little bit about the background. Uh, the connection to the, <laughs> I said the CCE there, Center for Community Engagement, actually I meant the connection uh, was facilitated by the Center for Community Engagement with the Community Advocacy Coalition. Uh, and Pilar Pacheco, our wonderful uh, center director, uh, made that connection, which I'm very thankful for. And we worked primarily with Angela Timmons and Byron Ward, who are on the, the board. Byron Ward is the current leader of the board of the CAC. So we met with them, had some discussions, refined the project and, and moved forward from there. The CAC had completed a survey in the summer of 2020 and they needed some analysis. It was focused on interests and priorities of members. And so I said, well, this is great. We can have our students do the analyses and provide you a whole bunch of fancy graphs and other things. Uh, so we set about doing that, but we also decided to do a short a uh, series of interviews, qualitative interviews uh, with community leaders uh, recruited by the CAC, focusing on experiences, particularly with law enforcement as one topic and uh, experiences with microaggressions uh, as the other topic. Um, so I wanna provide a little sense of both of these components of the project. The survey research, uh, as I mentioned, was designed to identify key issues within the community. It was sent out to 550 uh, people, 60 responses were returned, which is what we worked with, of course. Um, and we analyzed the data really through descriptive statistics. We didn't do anything fancy like bivariates or multivariate or anything like that, really just providing descriptive statistics. Uh, most of them were forced choice questions and we did graphs directly of those, but there was also some open-ended questions and the students had the chance to do some coding before we graphed them uh, and pulling out some uh, some specific responses. So, so it was a good experience. So let me give you a little, just a taste of what we did there. Um, there you see a, a graph of uh, the most relevant community issues. This was forced choice responses and you can see the means there from one to five, the higher number being those that uh, the respondents thought were most uh, relevant and important in the community. Uh, here was an example of an open-ended question uh, that was uh, coded by the students. And then of course the distributions uh, presented there. Uh, likewise with roadblocks to cohesiveness, very big, you know, important issues for the CAC to, to understand what people are thinking in the county. Let me talk a little bit about the interview research as well. Um, we divide, uh, developed an interview guide and worked with the Community uh, Advocacy Coalition to refine that and make sure that we were getting them just what they needed. They sent us a list of 40 potential participants, all of whom we uh, reached out to. Uh, we got 13 interviews uh, respondents and conducted all of those interviews. And we did it through Zoom. Of course, this was during the pandemic, which we were a little concerned about at first, but it turned out that the Zoom interviews actually worked quite well. One of the big advantages was that they provided an auto transcript, which was at least a, 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 um, a first draft of a transcript. Um, so again, students uh, did a lot of coding for this to uh, look at the distributions of responses and also pulled out some really good uh, narrative responses that we could uh, kind of um, oh bring to life some of those distributions. So again, let me give you a little sense of that. This was one question, uh, just looking at the distributions. How often do you experience microaggressions and how do they impact your daily life in Ventura County, specifically those that affect your self-worth, self-esteem and self-confidence as a whole? You can see the frequencies there, uh, those, what people responded about the effects that they had, and then a little bit about where they occurred. So again, very useful things to know. Again, we're not really focusing on the findings here, more so on just giving you a sense of the project, but that was very useful for the community, uh, Community Advocacy Coalition. Here's another one. What changes would you like to see in any aspect of life in Ventura County? And you can see, again, some of the distributions there, uh, all of which uh, emerged through student uh, coding, political and community engagement, quality in the workplace, expanding school curriculum, cultural activities and events. So, uh, this, and again, this is just one small slice of all the things we looked into, but hopefully I give you a little bit of sense of what we did. 
Uh, as with any really uh, good CBR project, community-based research project, there's a lot of mutual benefits for the Community Advocacy Coalition. They learned a lot more about the needs and priorities of their members and constituents. Um, and they're currently using those findings to develop uh, strategic plans for the future uh, to help guide their, 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 the work in their organization. And we're planning another partnership next year to kind of build on that. So I'm looking forward to that with a new group of students. The students themselves learned about issues facing African-Americans in the county, which is you know, a big part of sociology, I mean, in a, in a variety of different ways. Um, and they also, of course, experienced research firsthand, I like to say from design to delivery, that is they designed the research, you know, uh, figured out what kind of, uh, for example, in, um, interview instruments to use, uh, collected those data, conducted the, the, the interviews, um, you know, developed a whole bunch of graphs to analyze the, the, the survey data and the uh, interview data. Um, and wrote it all up in a great report, about a 60 page report with about another 60 pages of methodological appendices. So, so it was a significant uh, project and a great, um, a great experience for uh, students and for our partners. So uh, thanks, I hope that inspires some of you to do some of your own community-based research. Thank you so much, Dennis. Um, you do such fabulous work and, and um, it's always wonderful to hear from you about the kinds of projects you're doing. And in this case, you know, making sure that Black Lives Matter. I really appreciate that. So um, next we're gonna move to um, the Service Learning Through COVID-19 Awards. And even in the best of times, service learning pedagogy is demanding for both professors and community partners. So we want to acknowledge, particularly this year, the intrepid faculty and their partners who kept this signature pedagogy alive under some truly challenging circumstances. We have heard just a sampling of their course projects out of so many great ones. Um, and what you're seeing here is the first of three slides that um, would have been part of Susan Lefebvre's poster um, in a more typical setting um, had we been together in person. And I still am imagining us in Grand Salon all milling about and having fun and drinking our coffee. Um, her fall classes work to build voter engagement with the elections and her spring classes have dug deeply into the problem of homelessness, partnering with Darcy Taylor and his team at Habitat for Humanity. Some of our other awardees were able to put together videos, voice threads, and interactive presentations. Oh yeah, should, look, give them a moment to see. And then one more slide. And then we can move to the video, um, which is by um, Parul Malik. And it's an interactive presentation and we're going to place the link to the whole presentation in the chat, but we made a, a, an abbreviated video. You get to click on things um, to make this work. So we just did an abbreviated video clicking on a few of the key things. So we can let that one run. Hi everyone. Our presentation is called Telling Stories from the Margins. In this course, the students worked as storytellers and content creators using their skills to give voice to those who cannot speak for themselves. Con 320 students collaborated with CARL, which is Canine Adoption and Rescue League, to produce a series of audio profiles, informative posters, a fundraiser, and a Dolphin Radio podcast. A group of students also produced a podcast on food insecurity among college students. Here we can see how they collaborated virtually and we can hear snippets from their projects. Jackson, a seven-year-old mixed American Staffordshire Terrier has been a member of the Carl family for many years. Carl is a nonprofit canine adoption and rescue league facility based in Ventura County. Carl proudly shelters dogs and gives them a happy home until they are ready to find their forever home with a loving family. Available in their dorm and right. things like that. I could see that. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. were their feedback was, you know, that the food wasn't helpful for their living situation. Right. So 
This course was designed by harnessing the power of communication technologies like laptops, cell phones, video conferencing platforms like Zoom, collaborative tech like Dropbox and Google Drive, and freely available audio editing tools. The students learned by doing. They learned to collaborate virtually, produce final projects in different formats and not just text. They learned to create a project sequentially, chronologically over a period of time. And this is a no cost course, meaning the students did not have to buy a textbook for this course. We are so grateful to the persistence, creativity, and dedication of all of our service learning faculty through COVID-19, the awardees, all of you will be receiving certificates of recognition in the mail soon. Thank you so much for keeping this alive through this really challenging year. We so deserve our, um, well, yes, I'm, it's time for applause, isn't it? I just need to find my app again. This is to all the faculty. We managed to keep this alive this year. Thank you so much. And now we come to our Community Engaged Faculty Award. Um, this award honors usually a faculty member, in this case, three faculty members who exemplify what it means to be engaged in and serve our community. Um, the quality of those contributions, how they model the high impact practice of service learning. And I think we can move this slide. Um, and promote it on campus and in the community. We're going to ask Professor uh, Lauren Chase, Dr. Riojas Cortez, and Dr. Annie White to use your reaction button to raise your hands. That way you'll come to the front of our screens um, so we can see you while we're um, enjoying this. Um, these three are the winners of the community engaged faculty for their deeply collaborative and innovative service learning work which provided opportunities for early childhood study students to serve the community through virtual student-led activities for young children. The faculty worked in partnership with our, our winning partners, um, the Carrillo Economic Development Corporation, Housing Properties, and VSS of Chavez, the Medistry Departments, and Oxnard Performing Arts Center to address the community needs. Early childhood study students provided virtual learning experiences that included lessons focused on science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, we call STEAM, in fall 2020. And the Little Dolphins, or um, uh, virtual learning program during 20, spring 2021. These virtual learning programs focused on using culturally responsive children's literature to engage young children in early learning experiences, including reading, writing, math, science, music, physical movement, and language interactions. Wow, the children learned a lot. Please join us in congratulating Mari, Lauren, and Annie for their community engagement efforts. And so we'll do a little bit of applause. Yes, you deserve some applause. Yes, yes, yes. God, I missed the real applause. But you see, there's people clapping. You can hear them now. <laughs> It's pure silliness. Please join us in congratulating them. And we're going to get to hear their voices in this condensed video. The full video can be seen in the link that's going to be placed in the chat. Hello, my name is Dr. Mari Riojas Cortez and I'm here with my colleagues, Lauren Chase and Dr. Annie White. And we would like to present our service learning project for academic year 2020-2021. And we title it Authentic Learning and Assessment, Partnering with Farm Worker Children and Families in a Virtual World. Issues with, um, for, that we encounter in our academic year 2020-2021 um, with COVID-19 included the need for field work learning opportunities for our early childhood study students. And then we also knew there was a need for learning opportunities for children in vulnerable communities. So we decided to reach out to the Center for Community Engagement 
to see if we could address these issues through service learning. Partners that we worked with in the fall 2020 and spring 2021 were the Cabrillo Economic Development Corporation and the Oxnard Performing Arts Center. We first began our service learning with our early childhood studies program in fall 2020. Lauren and I both taught a section of ECS 463, Creating and Supporting Reciprocal Family and Community Network courses. And we developed five weeks of STEAM learning, science, technology, engineering, arts, math, STEAM, um, virtual learning opportunities for our students to engage the children from the community where they provided STEAM activities with materials that could be easily found in the home. There was 50 students um, enrolled in both courses and they provided activities in small groups for the children from Cabrillo Economic Development Corporation and Oxnard Performing Arts Center. Part of the way that our students were able to recruit the children from the community partners was developing promotional videos. So the students worked together in their groups and developed um, videos that were sent to the partners who posted on their website and sent to the families to recruit the children. They also did PR recruitment for the children through Facebook event pages um, that were developed by our partners and posted on social media. We knew that for our student teachers, we needed to enhance their learning opportunities and contextualize their experience into something that resembled what they will be seeing in the childcare settings or preschools. So we decided to create a virtual learning program called Los De Pequeños Delfines or the Little Dolphins program. And these, this program was based on three components. The first component focused on the use of culturally responsive children's literature in order for the children to see their culture reflected in their early literacy experiences. Within those experiences, we also wanted them to experience reading, writing, math, science, music, movement, and language interactions. The second component that we wanted them to participate in was the concept of circle time, which is something that happens in many preschool programs, and also read alouds, where children will have the opportunity to pick up their book and read their story aloud. And then the third component was our student teachers working intentionally in groups to plan and implement the learning opportunities during circle time. The flyer on the right is what we used uh, to promote and to um, have our families register for our Little Dolphins program. So the flyer is in Spanish um, at the top, which is their home language and English at the bottom. They would um, scan that QR code or click that link and they were able to identify needs for their children. Um, things that they were working on, uh, reading, literature, and writing. Um, we had 34 students between two sections of our courses and we paired them into small groups. There was 18 bilingual students. Um, we found this out by polling our students and we strategically placed at least one to two bilingual students per group and at least one to two students who had had previous virtual learning or virtual teaching experience. The materials and food ingredients were all um, purchased and provided for the families um, with funds provided by the Center for Community Engagement, as well as university funds. These are some examples of our students engaging in the virtual experience. As you can see, they're teaching, they're writing, um, they're taking dictation from what the children are telling them. They use backgrounds that reflected the books that they used. They used the books and they used docu cameras that were donated by the School of Education. Um, to read their books, and they also created some props, such as the posters that you see here. The students were able to reflect on their experience right after um, class, and they were able to write about the kinds of things that they experienced teaching virtually, but also as they were interacting with the children. Congratulations to our faculty awardees. One last applause for them. 
It's all yours, Pilar. Congratulations, Mari, Lauren, and Annie. Thank you so much. Um, our next, our next uh, award is our Student Reflective Essay Award. And as many of you know, reflection is an integral part of service learning because it connects and reinforces in-class work, course readings, and service experience for students. It provides them an opportunity to think critically and analyze their service experience, the community issue or need, and their own personal values and beliefs. The Student Reflective Essay Award is presented to a student or students in this case, whose essay, essays exhibits particular depth of insight concerning the challenges and satisfactions of community service, the impact on student growth and learning, and the greatest potential to inspire others to serve. This year's winners, Stephanie Tovar and Valeria Toscano from Early Childhood Studies Program were nominated by their professors, Dr. Annie White, Dr. Mari Riojas Cortez and Lauren White. We will now listen to videos made by Stephanie and Valeria speaking about their service learning experience and really the transformative experience they encountered um, while serving within Early Childhood Studies 461 and their work at um, Cabrillo Economic Development Properties, VSSR Chavez, and Meta Street Apartments. The Spring 2021 course, Preschool and Primary Student Teaching Seminar here at CSUCI contain a virtual service learning component that requires students to work together with community partners, farm worker families, and children ages three to eight from the Cabrillo Economic Housing Communities. In groups of four student teachers, we made sure to bring the best virtual learning experience to the children participating. This project consisted of my group and I working together to create lesson plans throughout the course of five consecutive weeks to engage children in culturally responsive activities that offer a variety of different learning opportunities that focus on reading, writing, math, science, cooking, and interactions in language. Being able to connect and relate to their culture and communicate with the families and the children in their home language truly really made this experience so much meaningful. This was my first time doing service learning and being able to work closely with um, virtually with children and their families has been an amazing, exciting, and rewarding experience. My professors, peers, community partners, and myself all worked alongside one another to make sure that the families and children had the corresponding materials and ingredients before each class. Each class consisted of my group and I working together to provide story time, games, cooking activities, and writer's workshop to engage children each week. Through this experience, my group and I were able to successfully meet our learner outcomes expected for this course. Some of these outcomes included designing and writing assessments and teaching plans for preschool and primary age children and designing professionally defensible, culturally re relevant learning environments, schedules, and routines for young children. Having this experience and knowledge to teach virtually and acquiring new teaching strategies when working with children is something that I will be taking away from this experience and my lesson plan implementations. Although sometimes our lesson plans did not go as planned because of technology issues or other challenges, my group and I still made sure that the children had the best experience possible each class. And the family's engagement was truly appreciated as well because it was a meaningful moment for the children to create stronger connections with their families. Being able to write learning stories to the children for them and their families to read about their growth and development and seeing how excited and engaged they were during each class made this experience enjoyable. One quote from the NAYC that is meaningful to me and that connects perfectly with this whole experience talks about how observation, documentation, and assessment of young children's progress and achievements is ongoing, strategic, reflective, and purposeful. 
After this experience, what is next for me as a future educator is to continue to work together with families and the community to create strong relationships and connections to benefit my future students' learning and life experiences. Hello, my name is Valeria Toscano, and today I'll be talking a little bit about my service learning experience in spring 2021. So service learning has impacted my learning tremendously. I have been fortunate enough to do service learning twice. I did it in the fall, and I, doing, I, I just finished it right now in the spring, and I have overcome so many personal hurdles and hurdles with actual service learning. I can say that one of my internal struggles was not so much being on board with online learning. All my undergrad, we've been told that, you know, children learn through playing and it's hands-on and we got to limit screens. And it was really hard for me to, you know, accept that we wouldn't be in the classroom, but this was the safest route to take. And immediately when the screens came on that first time in the fall, I was like, wow, look at all that engagement. It is possible. And my mind was completely blown at how the children were engaging and just how, like, how deep the connections could get with the children. They were telling me about their day. They were asking about ours and it was, it was amazing. And going into the semester, it was a little bit different. We had slightly older children. And I think that they might've been going through some Zoom fatigue and that was okay because we worked through it and we found ways for them to engage. And they were really working on their writing towards the end. They were writing in full sentences as opposed to a few words. And to me, that's how it impacted my learning. I was able to overcome so many hurdles that were kind of thrown our way. And we just took it on as a team and it worked and it benefited the children that we worked with. And there's nothing that can replicate uh, just creating those, ex uh, creating those connections with children. And it's something that I genuinely didn't think was possible via Zoom, but I was wrong. And I'm, I'm happy that I was wrong because I learned so much through these experiences. And it has also impacted the community. As a young child, I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher. I knew that I wanted to help my community. And I didn't necessarily know how. I would always go to those programs at the library where you would read a book with a person and you would draw a picture. And I benefited so much from these types of resources that were available to me. And I, you know, these are core memories that I have. And I always wondered, how can I do that for children? You know, how can I make that impact? And service learning allowed me to do that. And not only that, I got to work with families and I got to work with, um, with the people that run these programs. And I've learned so much about what they do and how important these programs are to our communities. And now I have established a partnership with them and I only hope that Channel Islands continues to do this because you see how impactful our partnerships were. The children are looking forward to the Tuesday meetings and they were sad to see us go. And that just shows that we're doing something positive in our community, especially during a time that was just very bleak and children aren't allowed to play with other children, but slowly it's getting better. And even though the times will change, I genuinely hope that um, they continue these partnerships and 
that there's more resources like this available. Um, but yeah, and as a teacher, you know, we learn about community partnerships and working with families, but you don't necessarily get to the experience that um, so early on. And for me, it was amazing to see how impactful this is because when I'm in the classroom, I can direct them to resources like the Cabrillo Economic Partnership that is with Channel Islands. And that is just really great to have, you know, under my belt. And the learning that took place during these five weeks uh, was connecting Latinx culture to uh, with learning. So we were reading books about making food and we were taste testing and we were out here making guacamole. We were making agos frescas and we were making tortillas and it was amazing. We got to we got to do math, we got to do writing and science and all these concepts were embedded into one little lesson. And it was just amazing to see that learning take place. And as a lifelong resident of Ventura County, specifically Oxnard, I've lived here my entire life and it just feels so good to give back to the community that has given so much to me seeing the children display their little Channel Islands um, foam fingers or the little flags. It's just, it's full circle. And, you know, we keep giving to them and, and we keep, and my hope is that you keep reaching out to these um, underrepresented communities and they will one day grow up to be the people who give these service learning lessons, or even if they don't, they remember it when they're in college and it just helps them as much as it has helped me. So yeah, thank you for listening. Thank you, Stephanie and Valeria. We ask you both to please use the reactions uh, icon to raise your hands so we can see you and we can honor you here. Those were so powerful. Thank you so much. Okay, I have the next slide too. Um, I am very proud to introduce to you here on our screen, these are our CSUCI STEM Corps students. Um, the STEM Corps program was, it's an initiative, it's a community service initiative that is run by the Center for Community Engagement, and it is our version of the AmeriCorps program. And uh, we created this program in collaboration with the Math and Science Teacher Initiative and the University Preparation Charter School and Cabrillo Economic Development. So I worked with Kara Naito um, with, uh, in the math and science teacher initiative uh, program. And we also worked with VSS or Chavez and Medistry department. So we work with Cristina and Antonio. And this program was launched in September of 2020 to specifically lessen the loss of learning that might be happening for elementary school children due to COVID and the pivot to virtual learning. And so the program aimed to add extra STEM and academic support to elementary school age children by having these students serve as tutors and mentors in a virtual setting. The STEM core members provided over 2,500 hours of one-on-one -on -one virtual learning and support and enrichment activities focused on advancing K through 12 student learning in 30 minute increments at these service sites. So at university prep school, VIA and Meta Street apartments. So please join me in recognizing these STEM students, STEM core members who are um, in such a large way and uh, did such a wonderful job with this program. It was our inaugural program and I'm just so, so very proud of each one of them. They'll be receiving a certificate of recognition for their service and commitment to the community, especially during this unprecedented time. 
And I think some of them are were able to join us today. If you are, could you please hit the uh, raise your hand reaction so that we can recognize your efforts? And if Jules, you can put on your applause app. Thank you all for your service. Yay. I think we have Jennifer next. Yes, so um, we would also like to give special recognition to four president scholars that have been pivotal to the CCE. As a part of the president scholars program, students serve 15 hours a semester. And these students went above and beyond their service commitment, collectively serving over 200 um, service hours. Alyssa interviewed students, alumni and staff for our Voices of CI campaign. Kaylee, Kaylina, and Iris ran our social media. And then Kaylee and Kaylina were also instrumental in helping with the development of the volunteer fair. So please join me in recognizing their efforts as well. Thank you. Okay, so we have the last of our videos to share. And of course we saved um, the performing arts faculty for that and their splash of capstone projects. They tried to cram so much into this, it's amazing. And it's art artful and we're all going to enjoy it. So looking forward to this one, enjoy. Sadness. 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 Oh, hooray! Hooray! Wow. You got it. Wow, you did that so well. They got it right away. Seriously. <laughs> you guys are so amazing. All of you. All of you are so amazing. That was so much fun. <laughs> I know, like, I'm okay. You're good. You can watch on YouTube. said they were all really really fun and I enjoy doing all of them but I also liked the last one because it was really fun when we had to make up a story and it was very random and funny to make and it was also fun to see the late person guessing. So my capstone project this semester was a four-part workshop series designed to bring the idea of using theater for advocacy uh, and finding your voice to the youth of the DCVC at the Rainbow Umbrella Youth Group. And basically, I wanted them to be able to see this amazing play, Dear Texas, and then to take the concepts they learned there and add their own voices to the narratives by writing their own Dear Texas monologue.
My name is Junior. At first, I was raised by a not-so-great person, and then by a great organization called the Canine Adoption and Rescue League, or CARL for short. We truly are best friends, and I'm happy that I was able to find my human. All thanks to CARL. I gotta give applause for that. I know, right? <laughs> for sure, that and to all of our faculty, community and partners and students who engaged in service learning in the courses this year. Amazing, amazing, innovative and creative work. We are, we are, um, we honor your work in the community. So let's see. So now we've come to the, uh, our final award the Janet Korsmo Community Engagement Award. And let me begin by giving you a bit of background um, about this award. So in 2015, the Center for Community Engagement Leadership team offered a staff award for outstanding community engagement to honor CSUCI staff member Janet Korsmo, who had given generously of her own time to participate in a variety of volunteer service days that were put on by the Center for Community Engagement. And over her 16 years at CSUCI, Janet continuously participated in United Way Day of Caring, our days of service honoring Martin Luther King, Cesar Chavez, the Hunger Banquet, just to name a few. And on campus, she could always be seen participating in the Heart Walk, Walk Across America. She was a part of the Recognition Committee, Staff Council, and always a planner and participant in the annual Spooktacular. Janet was committed she was dedicated, giving, and caring. And when asked why she gave so selflessly, she responded, it is important to always give back because someone in the community may be worse off than you and we should all lend a hand. And so it was fitting and with great pride and honor that we honored Janet Corsmo with the 2015 Engaged Staff Award. And sadly, we lost Janet this year and the CCE Advisory Board voted unanimously to rename the Engaged Staff Award in her honor. The Janet Corsmo Community Engagement Award recognizes a staff or administrator who embodies the culture and value of service that was so important to Janet. And this year, the inaugural award goes to Dr. Michelle Hasendonks. Dr. Dr. Hasendonks has been a part of the campus community for almost seven years and was recently appointed as Interim Assistant Vice President for Student Success and Equity. She sits on the Board of Directors for the Central Coast Alliance United for a Sustainable Economy. She has helped organize fundraiser events for this organization and contributes to important issues, such as the recently defeated proposal for the Puente Power Plant in Oxnard. Influenced by the high incidence of cancer that has affected multiple family members, Dr. Hasendonks is also a volunteer for Relay for Life of Oxnard, serving as the team captain. In collaboration with the LA Kings, Go Kings Go, that's what, that's what she wrote. She coordinated a fundraiser on Hockey Fights Cancer Night with proceeds going to the American Cancer Society. In addition, she's also passionate about the electoral process and has campus neighborhoods to encourage people to vote. Michelle says it's one thing to give your time, but it's also important to understand the structures behind the issues you're working on. I think an informed public leads to a healthier community and we must be engaged in local issues and work together for the sake of our future. And I could not agree more. 
So please join me in honoring Janet's memory and, ce and celebrating Dr. Michelle Hazendonks with the Janet Corsmo Community Engagement Award. And so we invite Michelle to um, uh, raise her hand. And if she would like to say a few words, we'd love to hear from her. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pilar, Jules, Jennifer. I am so humbled to receive this recognition and especially so because it is in honor of Janet's spirit and her legacy, um, so special. And so I, you know, just to say, I'm in awe of all the tremendous work that the Center for Community Engagement does which includes all the work of so many faculty and students and community partners and the significant impact that you all have on our community. I grew up here and while I left town after high school, I feel so proud that I was able to come back home and work here at CI and give back in so many different ways. And so just thank you all for the opportunities you've created for me to do that in fellowship with my fellow CI colleagues here um, and alongside our students. Thank you so much. And, and in the spirit of, of Janet, I'm so humbled and so grateful. Thank you, Michelle. And congratulations again to you and to all of our award winners, to our faculty, our community partner, our partners, and our students. And I will hand it back over to Jules. Oh, did you do the advisory board? <gasps> no. Oh my That's God. yours. So, oh my gosh, we are so grateful to our advisory board members. <laughs> yes, we, we are. Have, we have wonderful meetings with you all. We hope to see you soon because we actually have a meeting scheduled in a couple of weeks, our end of the year meeting. Um, but we, we are thankful for your service and your contributions to um, our board as well as to the Center for Community Engagement. And we'll just flash by you some quick stats. I'm not gonna go over them. You can look at them as I say, before we all go, we could not have pulled this together without the help of so many people, but particularly behind the scenes right now, Brian Goodman, who despite technical difficulties managed to make this go amazingly smoothly. And we're actually nearly on time, which is phenomenal given all the material we tried to cram into the tiny bit of time we had together with you. The work of the CCE is a community effort. So many people have collaborated to make everything you have seen here today possible. We can't thank you enough for spending your time with us today to honor all of the wonderful work of our students, our staff members, our faculty, our community partners. And we hope you have been inspired to consider new campus community service learning projects. We look forward to working with you next fall and have a wonderful rest of your day and a fabulous summer. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Oh, yeah. More. <laughs>